Hello, I'd like to thank SAGES for the opportunity to present today. I have no disclosures. The disclosures of my co-authors are there. So pediatric inguinal hernias are treated with high ligation. You know, they're, they're generally an indirect hernia as a result of a patent processus vaginalis. And high ligation has been shown to be a, a great tool with less than 1% recurrence rates. However, adult inguinal hernias are treated with mesh or muscle repairs, and there's evidence that mesh repairs have lower recurrence rates. So where do adolescents fit into this? Are they more similar to pediatric population or the adult population? And if so, what factors influence this? Does their BMI matter? Does the size of the defect matter? So we turn to the International Hernia Collaboration Facebook group. This is a group that was established by Dr. Brian Jacob and has over 2,000 members that are surgeons. On pretty much a daily basis, there are clinical cases and questions that are discussed in these forums. We created a survey that consisted of five questions. The first question asked the surgeons to define their practice. Um, the choices were pediatric surgeon or adult surgeon, and then we had adult surgeons um, select whether or not they operate on adolescents as part of their practice. Then we had four patient uh, scenarios. All the patients were 16-year-old males with a right-sided inguinal hernia. The first patient was thin with a small defect. The next was thin with a large defect. And the last two were obese patients with small and large defects. We had 64 responses. A third of responses were pediatric surgeons and two-thirds were adult surgeons. Of the adult surgeons, 81% indicated that they don't typically operate on adolescents. So here are the results for the first case, the thin patient with a small defect. Um, as you can see here, the responses are differently, and this was uh, statistically significant. But to simplify this, we categorized the procedure types based on whether they're typically adult repairs, so uh, mesh and muscle repairs, or pediatric repairs, the high ligation choices. And when we do this, the, the difference is striking. So for the same patient, 65% of adult surgeons would employ an adult type repair where only 14% of pediatric surgeons would use an adult type repair. Um, of, of note, about half of the procedures were chosen to be laparoscopic. So for the next patient, um, we increased the size of the defect to four centimeters and the results were much more similar. So. 100% of adult surgeons felt that this patient requires an adult type repair, and about 80% of pediatric surgeons agreed with that. In the third case, the patient was obese but had a small defect, and when we categorized the responses, the, they were quite different. You know, adult surgeons preferred an adult repair 80% of the time, whereas this number was only 24% for pediatric surgeons. What was interesting is both groups employed laparoscopy more. Uh, about 70% chose laparoscopic techniques. In the last case, there is an obese patient with a large defect, and the results are exactly the same as the small patient with the large defect. Um, in general, an adult repair is, is um, desired. So in summary, routine inguinal hernia is treated differently based on surgeon training. General surgeons tend to treat with open uh, muscle repairs or open or laparoscopic mesh techniques, whereas ingu or, um, pediatric surgeons tend to treat with high ligation as they um, do with their typical patient populations. When there's a larger defect, there is agreement that this patient would probably be better suited with an adult type repair. When the patient was obese, there is more of a tendency for laparoscopy, but surgeons still stuck to how they were trained and the typical population that they take care of. So in conclusion, for the same routine adolescent inguinal hernia, general surgeons and pediatric surgeons disagree on treatment, preferring to treat them the same as their typical patient population. This is very interesting for patients and their families as um, what most likely determines what sort of repair they would get is which surgeon they decide to schedule an appointment with. Um, 
Um, of course, further study is needed to determine what the optimal treatment for adolescents may be. Thank you.